Hi everybody. So here we're going with the skin prep for the horizontal stabilizer. Using my soldering iron to remove only the rivet areas of the skin. Uh, the broom handle trick won't work inside the interior fold of a big skin like that, so got to do that one by hand. I found that cutting out the piece that you want to remove is one giant piece, not overlapping the sections, is the easiest way to go. If you just do all the lines all the way across everywhere, you wind up with a whole bunch of tiny little pieces, that's a pain in the butt to get off. When you cut it out as one piece as I've done here, as you can see, it goes rather quickly, especially trying to grip that stuff with uh, gloves on. So taping off some unwanted areas where we don't want to be dimpling. I believe that's where the horizontal stabilizer fairing will go. So I'd mentioned before, a while back, I am working on uh, the side tables for the DRDD2. Uh, uh, well, the, the, so the wing kit is coming soon, uh, probably in the middle of September. Uh, and by the time that's ready, I've got to replace at least one of the work tables that's around me because it's not level, it's not strong, and I'm going to have to have a wing on it. So that has to be replaced. And I'm debating exactly the best way to mount the DRDD2. Uh, I mean, it's not light. It weighs like about 60 pounds. And maneuvering it around is generally kind of a pain. And as you can see, it has a tendency to meander on its own. So I've decided if I'm going to make a small special table just for it that rolls around, that will then become flush with the workbench or the work table in front of you and the other one that I'm going to build, or if I'm going to build the small side tables for the side, I, I don't know. It would make it a lot easier to work with. As you can see now, I've actually got the bottom of the skin resting against my uh, old office chair that I use uh, to work. Uh, holds the skin perfectly at, the, at just at the right height, so worked out well. Uh, one thing, I uh, received some feedback from other builders that uh, my dimples look good, but uh, I may not be putting quite enough force into them to make them as clean. The idea being you want uh, just uh, a giant field of perfectly smooth metal with dimple holes that come along and don't disrupt the overall smoothness of the skin. They're just their own little pits and don't have any kind of uh, extraneous waves or metal deformations and the best way to do that is to make sure that you're using enough force when you're using your making your temples so I, I've experimented with it and uh, th there's definitely a, a little bit of help with it um, I basically just increased how much force I needed to uh, push the temple in by you know a few pounds Again, though, talking about making horrible mistakes, so here I am dimpling the entire skin, having not primed first. So I'm using self-etching primer, which technically doesn't need to be, the metal doesn't need to be scuffed before it's uh, shot onto the skin. Uh, however, uh, light scuffing does help the adhesive qualities of the paint, especially on large, flat pieces like the skins. So. I'm inclined to scuff whenever uh, the piece is easy, and it helps the paint. 
Uh, the problem is to, you know, to scuff, you got to pull out some Scotch-Brite pads, and the pre-dimpled holes eat those pads up. I mean, completely eat through them. And I think we'll see examples of that in the next video. Or heck, maybe this one. Now, well, there goes the Dremel. To be honest, this was like at least a month ago. I'm trying to remember everything that I did. Looks like I'm doing some more countersinking prep. Anyway, we're gonna try, I'm just gonna let this one trail off. Uh, I know that we're going to be getting to the construction here in a video or two, so see you soon.